Fools. Now, it might be April Fools' Day, but this is no prank. A comedian with no political experience has won the first round of Ukraine's presidential elections. Early results today show that Vladimir Zelensky, with a strong lead over incumbent President Petro Poroshenko, setting the stage for a dramatic presidential runoff in three weeks between two men, well known to the public, but for very different reasons. Now, Vladimir Zelensky is a comedian and an actor. He stars in the TV series Servant of the People, playing a school teacher who becomes president after speaking out against corruption. During the campaign, Zelensky tapped into the anti-establishment mood in Ukraine, appealing to voters fed up with corruption. All right, here with me in the studio to discuss this is Louise Hook, an expert and researcher in Eurosceptic voters and the European elections. And still with us is a Belgian MEP, Mark Demesmacher, and our political editor, Darren McCaffrey. All right, before I go to you, Louise, with all your expertise, I'd like to ask Mark to react to this fact, and this idea that uh, an actor could win the presidential elections in Ukraine. Well, and he actually said, no promises, no disappointment. He was uh, quoted yeah, as saying that. No. <laughs> I've been, I've been a member of the EU-Ukraine delegation for many years, so I know the country quite well. I've travelled extensively uh, to the country. Um, and it comes as no surprise to me, to be honest, because people are fed up with the old generation, the old faces, really. Uh, Timoshenko, the other uh, candidate, and Poroshenko, mm -hmm. um, who have... OK, they took over the country after the the revolution of the dignity in 2014. Uh, they have conducted a number of reforms, reforms that have not had the time really but to see, this be implemented. this guy has no political experience. Yes. Is that not worrying well, for well, you? Uh, As... Or is that it, welcome? This, it, yeah, for me, well, welcome. It, it's the choice of the people. And uh, there was a time in Ukraine when elections were rigged all the times. For me, it is, it is, it, 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 it's a pleasant surprise to see that someone like him, can be elected in the first place. Mm. Um, and again, it's, it's the people's choice, um, and, and it's, a, it's a signal that people are fed up with false promises. And that, yeah... But how no, is that, though? We, okay, just, we should just say, I mean, Poroshenko did today... Uh, Interestingly, say that this he did acknowledge. Was a he know he said he it was a free election. It, yeah. So, uh, but but first of all, this is only the first round. Yeah, yeah. There <laughs> so is he, a hasn't, round. he hasn't he yes. hasn't won. He hasn't there won is, yet. There is a second round. So, so Louise, when yes. when you when you, you see a candidate like this who who's actually he's actually playing up the value of his ignorance. He was saying, oh, I don't have I don't have experience, right. and this yes. is actually a good thing. Mm -hmm. What does that say about you know why why that works? Well, I think this is exactly because people are fed up with politics as usual and the fact that these, I mean, we see it not only in Ukraine, there is many, many places in Europe and outside Europe where this argument that somebody is going to change something and give power back to the people uh, is really working. But, but this, in this situation, though, it's a country, Ukraine, you know, it is central to the, to the relationship between Russia and the EU. Isn't this, you know, doesn't this call for a little bit more experience in this sense? Well, I don't think that the people see it like, mm. like this. The people voting for this person really think that it will be a big change. And, and they like the fact that his style is different mm. and that he speaks differently and that he has a different background. And mm. so the fact that he is a comedian actually plays out in his advantage then. And we see it with somebody like Beppe Grillo. People were so fed I mean, up with... I it's not the first time an actor became... Exactly. No, <laughs> exactly. Look at, look at, so, look at yeah. Ronald Reagan right. in the United exactly. States. The look United at Donald States. Trump. I mean, look yeah. at also look at Emmanuel Macron. that never stood Absolutely. for office before we yes. came, yes. you know, the president of France. Mm. Um, you know, th this isn't a novel thing. And I think, I think what's worked in his favour is mm. not just he's a new face, I mean, he hasn't got any of the baggage from before in a, in a campaign dominated yeah. by corruption. But also, interestingly, even though I think he is relatively pro-European, has talked about being more conciliatory towards Russia then, when okay. it comes to the conflict in eastern yeah. Ukraine, uh, something obviously Poroshenko and I think, is seen as a strong man. The, the but, but, okay. but his experience may well be tested because there are TV debates over the sure. next couple of weeks. And mm -hmm. maybe we'll and, see and a lot more of what he can bring to the table there. When actually put under proper scrutiny. Because, well, yeah, but, but, yeah. but actually, not having, the, not, not having the baggage of this old politics in Ukraine can even be an advantage. We'll, we'll yeah, have no, to move yeah, on to no, another no, no, country yeah. now because actually Zelensky, he's not the only political outsider to have triumphed this weekend. Slovakia elected its first female president. She's a political newcomer and a lawyer, Susanna Kaputova. Chaputova waged a campaign built around anti-corruption and it struck a chord in a country still grappling with the murder of investigative journalist Jan Kuchak and his fiancée. But before that, Kaputova earned the name Slovakia's Erin Brokovic.
Milkovic for successfully stopping an illegal landfill in her hometown. Now, she triumphed over EU Commission Vice President and Energy Commissioner Mara Shevchevich. Her victory breaks a trend in Europe that's seen right-wing populist parties rise to power. Že sa dá ísť aj do politického zápasu s vlastným názorom, že sa dá nepodlahnuť populizmu, že sa dá hovoriť pravdu, že sa dá zaujať a získať dôveru aj bez agresívneho slovníka a podpásových osobných útokov. Naznačili to už voľby do samozprávnych krajov, potvrdili to komunálne voľby, dnes tiež voľby prezidentské, a verím, že sa pridajú aj tie európske, že Slovensko si pýta túto zmenu. All right, I'll go to you, uh, Louise, uh, for, for this mm -hmm. uh, yes. question. Because we can, let, let, let's broaden it out a little bit. Mm -hmm. is this, this is a trend we're seeing yes, um, in the run-up to the European the parliamentary mm -hmm. elections. And it's not just about whether it's left or right. As long as they're seen as outsiders. Can you tell us, uh, give us context uh, on why this is happening? Well, what I think is indeed this whole question of do we want more Europe or less Europe, uh, other new topics like uh, the environment, like uh, feminist issues, these are becoming much more important to voters and the old topics that the centre and mainstream parties uh, are very strong on and that people know them from and attach these issues to these parties, they are becoming less important to voters. Mm. Okay, rather uh, than the issues, what about issues? Well, these issues are becoming, these new issues are becoming more important. And so challengers or outsiders that have the chance to really build their profile on these issues, they also stand stronger. So is course. this the fuel this is, behind populism? Uh, I don't think this is the fuel behind populism, okay. no, because I think there's still a big difference between populists and just challengers or outsiders. So a populist really claims to speak for the people mm. as opposed to all the other uh, um, elitists, eh, what they call yeah. the elite and the uh, other political parties in the, so they distinguish themselves on the basis of, of this. So if from a politician's point of view, is this a sign of what we are about to see in campaigns unfolding? I, I think it depends on the context of the country involved here. Like, uh, like in, in Ukraine, which I know quite well, you had the context of, indeed, corruption going on, and despite the promises of the... What about here in the European and here, Union? Well, what we have seen here is, indeed, a more volatile landscape. Uh, you used to be born uh, as in a socialist family or a Christian <laughs> Democrat or liberal family. That was the case in, in, in Belgium. The three everyone divisions. voted the same and way. You mm. voted the same way. This has completely, this has changed, of course. The, the, the public or the, the, um, uh, the voters can, can, can change from one election to the other. In, in a dramatic well, way. That's what we've seen. Eastern also, Europe. the media mm. context is completely yes. different with mm. social media. Mm. You see it also in, in, in mm. Slovakia and Ukraine, where, where the, 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 the mainstream media are in the hands of the old elite. But, but despite that, you know, the newcomers are able to break through. This is not, the, this to, is not the only time in history that we've ever seen, you know, protest votes or people voting no, against. No, and it's not. And then, or, or, or dramatic new, reaction, new characters it? coming. But it comes back to, I mean, something I've been saying, I think we are going to see... You're right. I mean, clearly, every EU country is different and there are local forces at play, even in the rise of populism. But I also think we might well see a little bit of a backlash against the backlash, mm. which I keep talking <laughs> about. Right. But it's essentially yeah. that um, there, are also, there is a middle ground or a liberal strain of voters mm. out there who actually are starting to become a lot more active against populism. populism right. and, it, and it's not just in Slovakia, though the environment mm. there is more conducive to it because there's not been the clampdown on the media or the rule of law that we've seen elsewhere. But you look, but we've they got they definitely an also an present themselves as outsiders and they present themselves as parties that are, have a different style, that are fresh and young yeah. and they mm. also try to ride this wave of people want to see change, people are... It's just a different type of change. Yeah, absolutely. And you look, you've got, you yes. know, you've got a a gay mayor in a, in a city in, in yes. Poland. You've yes. got momentum making yeah. a little bit of inroad in, in Hungary. You know, there are changes, yeah. uh, more significant in Slovakia than, than, mm. than elsewhere. Um, but I do but suspect here, we will see further changes. The first time changes. that a, there is a female president, I think mm. these things are also relevant and this is also like a sign of change, right. indeed. Yes, it almost seems like a pendulum. It's just, when you say backlash against a backlash, it almost seems like it's just going one way or well, the other I and finding a middle as, ground. I see more as kind of the center is right. breaking apart mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. and people are more polarizing polarized. on different uh, topics. And it's either one sided, like in France, we've yeah. seen Marine Le Pen against Macron. For sure. And this competition is becoming I mean, much more If one thing is certain, everywhere. I think this, the elections now seem to be really exciting. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> no, it's not going to be dull.